I have a guest joining me now live on set. Tom Anelli is a criminal defense attorney, plies his trade in Syracuse. I like Syracuse. I used to go to college near Syracuse. And you said? All right, let's talk about this. Um, it drives me mental. Uh, the whole DNA issue with, with OJ was so long ago people really didn't know what it was. Now, it's the exact opposite. If you don't have DNA in a case, I don't know that jurors even think that there's a case. I almost feel like if they don't have a molecular smoking gun, there's reasonable doubt. Do you think that? You know, Ashley, I think it's funny. Um, defense attorneys are going to rest on this stuff. I mean, anything we can use to develop reasonable doubt in a case, we're going we're gonna to reach out to do so. Um, and science is a great area for us to do that because folks don't understand it. Juries don't get it sometimes. And it's a great area, <clears throat> whether the case is a good case for DNA or a bad case for DNA, it's a great, it's it's a great, case great for area. You. Yeah, it's a great case for a defense so, but attorney. What's weird about that is that the more science you get, the more provable you would think something is. You know, it, there's empirical data that backs up science. How do you fight that? Well, because there's protocol and procedure to taking that empirical data. That, ah, so it's the human element you're right. after. That's exactly the right. The bozos handling this that's stuff, exactly right? That's exactly right, and they always mishandle it, and as you, you see it in this case. Well, okay, so let, let's talk about the uh, the genes in the case. You know, these are genes that are found in the master bedroom. They've got keys attached to them, and there's some question as to whether they belong to the defendant. Can't you test to see if someone's been wearing his own pants? I mean, all I ever hear about is cells or microscopic traces of someone's DNA. If you're wearing genes, my God, isn't your DNA in there somewhere? You'd think to so. To prove they're your genes? Why is it so hard? You'd think so. I mean, and this thing plays out. This guy's no Ronnie Romance, as we can see from the, you know, Say that the again, Ronnie Romance? Yeah. Is that an official legal term? Yeah, it is. That is. That's, <laughs> that's in Black's legal dictionary. <laughs> well, I, yeah, but the thing is, it just sounds to me like that's just not an issue that should have been contentious, whether these were his genes or not. I mean, they're, they're, they're actually leaving it to the jury to make the leap that those were his keys on the genes, so they must be his. Doesn't science give us a little more than that in this day and age? No. And in fact, you'll see it throughout the whole case. You're going to see challenges of the protocol and procedure in which this empirical data is taken and, and everything is going to be a question because all the defense needs and the defense will um, look to is to provide some form of reasonable doubt for the jury to hang their hand on and equip this guy. So I'm thinking this lawyer, Stephen Sauer, uh, it's his first murder case. That's got to be a bit scary. Uh, anybody, any defense attorney who's handling his first murder case, and it's a first degree charge. I mean, originally it was a second degree charge. It's a first degree charge. He's facing life in prison. That's daunting to start with. Sure. Knowing that you don't have any background in this, that's really scary. And then you get this dumper of a case on your desk. Put yourself in Stephen's shoes. What would you have been thinking? Like, yeah, this is a great idea. I'll take this case. Well, well the good thing is, I mean, when you take a case like this and everybody expects you to lose, uh, a win is just gravy. I mean, you look at it and, yeah, and, and you tell your friends and you say, hey, you say, hey, um, you know, not for nothing, this guy's guilty and if I get him off then it's because I'm great and if right. and if he loses it's because he was guilty. The case was yeah. lousy. Yeah. yeah. So you want these cases even though they look like they're really really hard to uh, hard to win. Of course. Yeah. Of course as a defense attorney you want any good case because it shows your prowess as a, as a criminal litigator. If you prevail. If you, win. If you prevail. Sure. Exactly. This thing originally wasn't a first degree murder strangely enough. It was charged as a second degree. So Thomas, I don't get this. Maybe you can explain to me with the evidence the way it was when the cops walked into that house and everybody said the same thing. Yeah, this is no suicide. How does it end up getting charged as a second degree right off the bat? Well, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of play um, with the charges, and what happens is, oftentimes prosecutors will will seek the higher charge first, and then they'll they'll drop yeah. it back when they make a you know. I'm in used order, to seeing that. In I'm order not used to, to seeing this. Position, sure, um, but then they look at the case and they say, what can we make stick? And at some point they have to do that. And when you have the facts in this case where there's a lot of stuff, you know, they, they have the fact that 25% of battered women commit suicide and all these other things that play into it. And the fact it doesn't look super premeditated. I mean, just like the defense attorney is pointing out, a lot of this stuff doesn't look planned, the positioning of the gun. I mean, the crime scene is a mess. And if it was premeditated, he would have done a better job of laying stuff back out. And, not well, provided you have a smart defendant. Well, they're not all rocket scientists. I think we've come to learn, right? Every time we go into these courtrooms, these people think they're smarter than the average bear, and they're morons. Sure, and we've all seen stupid criminals caught on tape in those yeah. shows that, you know, play we on air. Sure, sure. On True TV. Good stuff. Okay. Starting at 8 o'clock. Great stuff, by the way. <laughs> Love the shows. You are our demo, yeah, my friend, yeah. and I know you watch. Yeah, I'm all over <laughs> it. As is my husband. <laughs> Love that stuff. But the truth is, I, I never can quite understand how something can be charged one way when it looks so obvious from the outset. And then I'm going to go even further here. They offered him a plea deal, 25 years, and he rejected it. Sure, sure. What am I missing? 
Well, you're going to see. I mean, you're going to see all the plans. Some of the stuff I just talked about, the fact that um, she has this pattern of psychological behavior that evidences the fact that she may, in fact, have committed suicide. It's not great evidence. I mean, this isn't like we've got Andrea Yates in that courtroom. I mean, she went and saw a psychiatrist a few times. Who wouldn't marry to a guy like this, the crazy maker? But she married crazy maker twice, remind you. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy in and of itself, and therefore, you know, maybe she is the crazy one. I don't remember what I had for breakfast. I know it was cereal, no idea what kind. And I'm thinking four or five years back, would I be able to remember exactly what time someone called? Tom, what do you think? I don't know. That's pretty I mean, good cross, don't you think? It's, yeah, it was good stuff. Um, the bottom line, I think, you know, this is a woman who's, uh, you know, has some type of relationship with this man. So you think? Some type. <laughs> They're roommates? A little something, something. Man, are you kidding me? First of all, paramours are roommates, however you want to look at it. You don't think they're talking about a murder trial that's coming down? You don't think they're talking, hey, dude, you might want to pay me for the rent because you may not be walking out the back door of the courtroom next week. Please. Right, right, sure, certainly. I mean, I mean, these guys, you know, the fact that they're not talking together um, about the trial, so to speak, is, is, is not very credible. I mean, that it's, really, it's hard to believe. Doesn't that just punch a huge hole in your credibility and everything else you're saying? Because I actually quite like her, and I think she's really believable, but for that ridiculous notion, sure. she's not talking to him about the trial. Please. They've known each other 22, 23 years, what was it? Right. Yeah. So how do you actually try to rehabilitate that? You know, I think you go, I mean, you go to, uh, you need to go to this, she's obviously not a professional witness. She's on the stand, she's talking about, you know, giving testimony for somebody she cares about and whether she's couching it uh, in terms that um, lend itself to protecting him, so be it. But it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, that he, that he did it. She's sweet. I do like her. <laughs> Come on, please. Lady, please. All right. Uh, uh, so here's the deal. Thank you very much for all your amazing insights. Thank you for You're having gonna me. You're going to come back? Yeah, certainly. Say hi to Syracuse for me. Will do. <laughs> I gotta come up and visit sometime. It's been a long time since I've been there. You do that. Tom and Ellie, it's good to have you here. We appreciate all your uh, all your hard work today. 